um, warm it up came, wrap it came, um, set it off. Um, it was yeah, it was just incredible. I mean, so many, so many things that contribute to, to his name as far as great work. Another uh, MOP, Mark D, Big Pun, RZA. Big L was deceased when I did the record with him. But I knew Big L. I, I met Big L on a couple of occasions, and Big L was also a cool, real cool dad, a uh, real cool dude personally. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I had a lot of respect for Big L too. And I thought, I thought Big L was definitely uh, one of the nice ones as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, Raekwon did Joel Ortiz. As far as like new cats, Pat Pools, Joel Ortiz, um, uh, Fifty. Uh, and, but uh, the record I did uh, called Queens with Picky L, uh, Prodigy, Tony Ayo, I believe. Um, I mean, I work with so many, so many different artists as well too. And, and it's not the, um, it's not to minimize the, my level of excitement or, or appreciation working with other artists. These are just some of like my personal highlights uh, as far as like to work with other artists throughout my career. I mean, man, I wasn't really paying attention to, to groups like NWA. Like, like really, the, the groups that came out before that, <clears throat> they wasn't really my type of rap. But, um, because I was a street rap. <clears throat> so, I was street rap appealed to me. You know what I'm saying? So, when I heard groups like NWA, and then, you know, uh, Ice Cube when he was solo, um, and then... And then it became an explosion out of LA, out of California, period, with like rappers like MCA or Tupac. Tupac wasn't originally from Cali, but he did represent Cali. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I would I would um, associate Tupac with California. <clears throat> so Tupac, then later on, Kane, <clears throat> and um, uh, man, there was a lot of, a lot of uh, cats from the um, Cali side. Really prominent at the time, you know? very long way. I mean, it came from something that started in the borough and spread it throughout the boroughs of New York City to like a, one of the one of the major genres of music in general. And, and maybe at times, maybe at times the biggest genre, you know, because when I was younger, going to high school, rap was still pretty much, uh, music was still pretty much segregated, you know what I'm saying? Like you had the kids that was in the rock, you had the kids that was in the disco, and then eventually hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and people usually stay within a genre. Like, they was dedicated to a genre of music. Like, rock fans was was dedicated rock fans. Now it came to a point where rock, and, and um, I know it's not the same rock as it used to be. I know, you know it turned to grunge and, 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 and many different forms of, of the, of the, of the um, you know, same rock scene, heavy metal. Um, but now it's came to a point where like hip hop and, and, and um and all the branches of rock kind of like merge together like they kind of play hand in hand you know what i'm saying this is why jay-z could do a record with Linkin park and and um and coldplay i believe he also did a, a record with you know because it, it makes sense it makes sense and i mean you got to think uh the pioneers like run dmc but like really breaking that barrier down and, and making the first hip-hop and, and rock artist record in history. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what? I think it gets a, a bad rap for people that really, really like lyricists. And, and so you get, uh, it's like, it's like, it seems like when you're the underdog, people cheer, people cheer for you and root for you. But when you make that champion status, you know, people want to start gunning you down. And so you, you hear a lot of little Wayne is whack and this and that. Like, you know, and a, and a lot of people would say, uh, I mean, I hear all the time, like a lot of people credit rappers like me over little Wayne, you know what I'm saying? I can understand people's preference and appreciation for um, the art of lyricism, you know what I'm saying, which I'm known to do. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, <clears throat> I wouldn't agree with um, people saying Lil Wayne is whack. You know what I mean? Because I, I heard Lil Wayne records many times, and he say, he say a lot of clever things.
maybe every record might not be up to the same standards as some. You know what I'm saying? But he has his material where dude be saying some stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, say some clever stuff. <clears throat> you got a lot of punchlines. But you know what? I don't like to knock nobody for uh, whatever art form or yeah. whatever direction whatever direction they take because even a, 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 a rapper like Vanilla Ice contributed to hip-hop by opening up, you know, like, he sold 11 million records. So that's a, that's a, that's a millions of people that possibly wasn't really in the hip-hop before, you know what I'm saying, and, and got turned on to it by Vanilla Ice. <clears throat> so it's, everybody contributes. Everybody has contributed to the to the um the whole genre of music and made the um fan base as as humongous as it is today. And and made one of, and made hip hop one of the most biggest genres of music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? MC Hammer, Vanilla Ice, you know what I'm saying? All these, you know, a lot of people that people will consider, you know, uh, uh selling out or, or pop or mainstream, you know what I'm saying? But what they don't realize, yo, these dudes is what help contribute to make the fan base as big as it is. what he was saying but um I didn't really believe hip hop was dead and um <clears throat> I know a lot of Nas fans love Nas so much that Nas can kind of play psychological games with them <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying and, and kind of just say whatever Nas says and the people gonna run with it because they love Nas so much you know what I'm saying which is <clears throat> and as much as I love Nas and as much as I um, admire him for his talent and, and, and for his legendary status you know cause he did become a legend um I didn't necessarily agree with hip hop is dead, but in a way he was, like I said before, the way he was right was a certain form of hip hop was dead, because it was changing. It was going to the uh, rock order thing, order tune thing, and all that, and, 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 it, and it became a thing of more swagger uh, over straight up town. You know, swagger became more important than town. It became a point where, and even to this day, where the labels are not interested in lyricists. They don't want lyricists. You know what I'm saying? They want somebody that got a controversy, a story, yeah. um, a, a gimmick, swag. So I understood what Nas was saying when he said hip hop was dead because that that form of hip hop did die. And if and if you if you really look at it, it's not just hip hop. I think music in general, you know what I'm saying, kind of suffered that that um that blow of just um where talent wasn't as important. Anymore. It became more um got a gimmick or or we got a certain swagger with you, a certain character. You know what I'm saying? It's like sort of like combining acting and, and the music and the same thing. I mean fashion was always a, a, a major part of hip hop culture. Like you couldn't really be hip hop in um hip hop's growing stages and 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 then and, and the golden era. And, and um, not dress accordingly to the times of, 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 of the street styles and fashions. Everything was, you know, like the times of Run DMC, everything was Adidas, leather pants, leather blazers, sheep skins, leather bombers, you know, and then eventually it would turn to, um, you know, like around my era, it was still, it would be more like Timberlands, Timberlands and jeans. And, and um, you know, the Parker coats, you know what I'm saying, with the, uh, really the Run DMC coats, that was still around. Maybe not the Adidas with no shoelaces or fat shoe strings and all that, but you know what I'm saying. But the, the uh, and then sheepskins turned to Sherlock. You know what I'm saying? And and then it, and, and also minks, mink coats. You know, it started to progress the minks and all that because hip hop became more lucrative. You know what I'm saying? And you know, like the the, the Adidas and leather suits and leather blazers. That was like uh, fashion that was affordable in the hood. You know what I'm saying? But as hip hop progressed and, and the crack ever came around, when people started making money, people yeah. started dressing different. And big rope chains turned into uh, maybe a thick herring bone with a nice diamond piece on it. That's why you heard Biggie making references. By that time, diamonds was affordable. Rolex watches was affordable. You know what I mean? Because of the crack era and because of hip hop growing. So you would see either hip hop artists in the hoods. Um, in the hood with all of these different things, or you would see the drug deal, the nice cars and all that. Um, you know, now it's <laughs> somewhere totally different. <laughs> Yo, 
um, it's not really much of a relationship at, at, at this point. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, Ross had got busy really doing his thing, and yeah. But um, we, we did we did sit down and we did um uh we did talk about doing um a situation together. You know what I'm saying? But it fell through. You know what I mean? He wanted me to sign with um Maybach Music. You know, so we was on that page for a minute, but things just didn't work out contractually. You know what I'm saying? So you know, there was no hard feelings, nothing like that. You know, Rick Ross went on and did what he what he did, and I just went to do right there what he did. I like Ron Ross a lot as far as uh, um uh, you know what I mean? Like and and, uh, and and um personal wise too. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, we had always showed me a lot of love and respect. You know what I mean? It was mutual. I did the same with him, and that's the that's the way it left off. Most of the time in, in uh, the early stages of my career, usually, you know, we had like uh, a photographer, like, like Cole Turner Records would use a photographer, mainly for like most of the artists. And um, he would come up with different ideas of, of things and uh, things of that nature. So the early part of my career, it was pretty much like the photographer coming up with a, a cool idea based around the material on a, um, on a record. And then later on, I would start, you know, like giving my own input on uh, how I would how I how I would want the um the artwork, artwork to look. Like what albums like maybe uh four or five uh Live and Let Die all the way up to now. You know what I'm saying? But after Live and Let Die, four, five, six, um, Bruce of Evil, um, not so much being kind of story. Um, but uh the last album I released, which is Lord to Respect. Um and, and um the EP full of half clip. I mean, I can speak on it. it was basically, I recorded that album for um, Rorcus Records. And um, Rorcus Records that uh, uh, lost their distri distribution and um, their financial back, like, like right around at the same time. And they couldn't really release my record without a major distributor who bought contract. Couldn't release my record without a major dis uh, distribution, <clears throat> so they had to restructure a whole different deal with somebody else, and and it kind of caused a lot of friction between me and the label. You know what I'm saying because I had worked on that album for like maybe about a year, and um and I felt that the slowing down process was kind of messing me up because certain key records is already released, like the streets was released for like for um, for the underground, for the street, and, and then um my life that came out more for the commercial. Um, re-entry of G-Rap, you know what I'm saying, a resurface in the G-Rap, you know what I'm saying, but there was no major push behind a single, they didn't treat it as a single, they pretty much just treated it as a, like a promo thing, you know what I'm saying, but that was a strong record, and I think it should have been treated like a single, and pushed and promoted and, and, and marketed it as a single. So it just created a lot of friction, and then, you know, we just end up parting ways, and then um, Cox Records licensed the album from um, Rockers. And that, that's what the whole delay thing was. That's why it came out so much more later than what it should have. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, right now, I'm doing a project called The Godfather's with the rapper Necro. And um, that's coming along real nice. Necro's a wild dude. You know what I'm saying? It's a pleasure working with him, though, because he's very talented. And um, production-wise as well. Talented both ways as a lyricist and, and as a producer. Um, also, me and Alchemist this week, and we came to the uh, agreement to uh, put a project together as well. And I'm also working on a street album right now, so it's going to be the Necro project as far as collaborations for me. And then, like what I did before I dropped, which is World to Respect, I dropped uh, an EP just to get a fan something before the album came out. I'm, a, I'm, I'm working on a street album as well. I'm uh, saying so after the Necro project, it'll be a T Rap Street album, then a project without me. Oh man, um, Molly, Boss Professor, Sir Jinx, Buck Wild, and then um, my man Super Dave, Level 13, DJ Payne, Premier, for both, both records that <clears throat> me and Premier did basically placed my vocals on over a track. But it was never um in the same facility, like, you know what I'm saying? So this is why, <clears throat> I mean, I love, I love him as a producer, but I never really worked with him like side by 
outside and, and then record it in the same studio and all that. <clears throat> with, the, with the other producers, you know, I have, I, I work with them total 100%. That's why I, I named those, those um, individuals. And um, J. Cole is talented. I think Drake's talented. I think J. Cole is talented. But I'm more into uh, cats like Joe L.O.T.'s. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, more of the underground. You know what I'm saying? More of the uh, lyricism. You know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm into more lyricism. You know what I'm saying? Um, like Drake or J. Cole is not lyrical, but they, they're more mainstream lyrical, you know? I'm into like really hardcore, complex, just spit. Yeah, like I'm, in, I'm into spitters. That's that's what like that's what um entertains me. That's what uh like gets me worked up. Is hearing somebody <coughs> perform performing the art of lyrics to its full capacity. Um, I'm not that familiar. But I know it's a lot of good um, artists from the UK side because I do a lot of features. And I feature with, um, with artists <clears throat> that um, you know, I was blown away by the uh, performance. You know what I'm saying? I think it's changed over the, uh, the years. You know, I think I think when it was with hip hop <clears throat> was first coming out of the UK, it was like um, you had some good. I heard good rappers, but it was like totally different from rappers from over here. You know what I'm saying? It was like. <clears throat> and not to put the UK down, this is like neck and neck. And it's, it's, it, it came to the point where, by talent, and um, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Maybe by maybe by an accent, you know, which maybe with some artists and some. I, mean, I heard a lot of artists you don't even hear the accent. You know what I'm saying? To be able to differentiate, like you know, whether they, whether they from here or, or over there on that side. You know what I'm saying? So if it's not an accent, giving it away. You know what? You know, like the London. Action, then you, you wouldn't even know. Yeah, as far as skill capability, they right there. Hey, yo, what's good, y'all? It's your boy Cookie Rap right here. Let y'all know this is recognized and moving. You heard? Speak your mind. Speak your mind.